Alright guys, this is my full review of a Jelly Band version 5.1 on the AT&T Galaxy Note 2. Now this is, of course, available for the other LTE Note 2s, so keep that in mind. So if we go down to About Phone, you see this Jelly Band is based on Android 4.2, which is a big improvement over the latest Jelly Band. But of course, if you improve the, you know, the Android version, you lose a little bit of features, so I'll kind of cover that. So let's just jump right into like the main feature of this ROM. Let's go into AOKP settings, general UI. You can mess with your custom boot animation. You can have a custom carrier label. So see I have Brandon's Note 2. You may not be able to see it all that well, but you can choose a custom background. You can show your notification count. So if you have more than one Gmail, it'll show a little number next to it, which is a pretty neat feature. Of course, I have your status bar slider where you can change your brightness. And you can also change the opacity of your status bar and navigation bar. So you see I have it at 0% to be transparent, but it's only transparent on the home screen for the tra for the status bar. Now the navigation bar, I don't know why, but it's only transparent in YouTube. So I'll post a screenshot up of YouTube. I'm not sure why, but it works, I guess, right? <laughs> so if we continue, you can, of course, allow 180 degrees rotation. And you have your kill all and recent RAMs button, which you see right there, you, we can kill all. And it also shows our you know available RAM. So just select kill all. Of course it kills the app that you're in, so not sure why, but you yeah, know it works. And if we go back into AOKP settings, if we go under lock screen, you can change your text color. You can of course use battery percentage. One thing I like is that you can enable long press on the little lock icon and unlock the screen. And of course you can have the widget carousel for the 3D effect off tablets. And of course you can enable all widgets and unlimited so you can just keep going. So this is my lock screen. I have an HD widgets, you know, widget. And I have it to where, you know, they are expanded. You have your custom 3D carousel, which I think is pretty nice. I have my Gmail widget and I have Falcon for Twitter. And of course you can add any widgets that you want. And also long press on that to unlock. Now if you wanted to you could also slide up and use a little you know normal lock screen, but that's no fun, right? And under navigation bar, they give you the option to turn this on or off, which is pretty nice. So if you're one of the people that want to use the full, you know, screen of the Galaxy Note 2 and you don't want this, you can just turn it off. Now if you go down to navigation button quantity, you can have up to five. You can change the colors of your navigation bar buttons. Now they are themed that way because of the theme that I am running. So I will post a link to the theme that I'm using in the description below, of course. But you can choose any actions that you want and also if you tap on menu you can change the icon so if you don't want that menu icon you can download any icon that you want and assign it by just tapping the little menu and of course we have our navigation bar ring where you can mess with the custom targets so you, if I slide up you see I have Falcon Pro for Twitter and I have camera with Google now and if we go down we can enable long press so we can have up to 10 because the maximum number is 5 but if say you long press on that one app, it can take you to a totally different app, which is pretty neat. But whenever you mess with the navigation, you know, the uh, ring, the transparency goes back down to zero. So you're going to have to bring that back up to 100 or 80, wherever you want to put it, so you can actually see your navigation buttons. I'm not sure, like, why, but it's a small bug, but it's not that bad. And if we go under battery, you can see that you can choose, you know, your battery icon style. So you see I have the circle mod. You can also have an icon. You, ha you can have a custom battery bar. You see I have mine that's centered. So if we go back, we can go to clock. Not much, you know, under clock. I have it where if, if I click on the, you know, clock, it takes me to my alarms, which is a pretty neat feature. And also, I have my clock in the center with my AM, PM is small and the day of the week of course because it looks pretty neat to me I think signal is where you can change the little bars to the actual text I can't read the DVM text so I kinda leave that as you know the icon so now for the toggles I'm not gonna go through the entire list of toggles but these are just a few that I have so you see I have the brightness toggle settings Wi-Fi you know data now you can have like five per row four per row like I have or you can just have the default three but since the Note 2 screen is pretty big, you see that I have the 4 and it still looks pretty good. But if you do use the torch toggle, that does break the camera, so that's a small bug. 
you can enable the fast toggle you can choose the right side or the left I choose right so when I quickly pull down on the right side of the screen it takes me right to the quick settings so or status bar toggles whatever they're called now under LED this is just where you can choose a custom LED for the for any app that you want sound is just where you can mess with the sound panel and stuff like that and vibration is just where you can have you know the custom like if someone calls you can have a custom vibrating thing now you notice that you don't see any gestures in there yet but they will be implemented soon so just be on the lookout for those and if we continue on to Sajimon settings this is where you can mess with that you know Cronus clock widget that AO, I mean that Sajimon has kind of created I guess they would call it you can mess with the clock and alarm you can turn on the weather panel if you want to use that and also you can turn on and off calendar your, like your calendar so kinda like on the AOKP lock screen stuff like that but now button actions this is where you can assign custom actions if you long press on the actual physical buttons not on the on-screen buttons you you know you change like if you long press on those under the AOKP navbar settings but so this is a pretty neat feature if you wanna like have like where you long press menu you want it to have torch which is pretty neat expand desktop that's just where you know you have the option to hide the status bar and also hide the navigation bar which is pretty neat see so I have the torch and screenshot so let's go back now screen security that's just where you can set up your pattern I'm not gonna go too much into that because it's not really anything exciting so now under DPI settings since Paranoid Android isn't baked into this ROM quite yet I hear he's working on it because I've been reading the thread but you can of course change the you know the DPI per app and if you don't like that it comes stock at 280 DPI, you notice everything is a little bit smaller. Download something like you know DPI Changer, LCD Density. Download anything, and you can change the LCD Density back up to 320. So you don't have to deal with the 280. I know some of you guys had a bug where the screen was kind of sucked in. Download a new launcher. <laughs> it's not that hard. I downloaded um, TSF Shell, and you see it works fine. No issues with the status bar whatsoever. So, under performance control, you can't change the current, like the megahertz. See, you can't, it's there, it's not moving. But if we go over here, you can mess with custom, you know, kernel related settings. I don't mess with those because I don't know what they are and I'm gonna screw up my phone. So, and also, you have your disabled the media scanner. I didn't because I don't, like, it's fine, I guess. If it's there, it works, right? Um, and go back up to the top we do have the science mod profiles and under theme settings this is where of course you do have your theme chooser see I am running the dope theme I have too many themes installed go back and this is also where you can mess with your jelly band wallpapers really nice wall I, I like that wallpaper the best personally but we go over and kinda get into the stock 4.2 wallpapers a little bit and boom 2013 so if you see, I don't have the wallpaper because of my current setup where, it, you know, I kind of have apps and stuff on my home screen. But if we go into the app drawer, this does come with a few, you know, custom applications like the exposed managers. This is just basically a quick shortcut to the DPI settings. And if we go to this one, is the exposed installer. I don't mess with this, but this is where you can have the framework to use the exposed mod. So I guess it's just to install the updates and if there are any. Let's go back. And also, if you don't want to use it, you can just uninstall it too. And then it comes with Mod My Android, which is, I, after actually looking at the app, it is pretty neat. So if we do load it up, you know, this is just a app that the, the developers have created, which you can use this if you want to. I, I don't personally use it, but I get, it is pretty neat. So if we go back, click Exit to Yes, and go back home. So now the bugs. Everything has worked for me in call audio Google now does not work so just to show you guys if I pull this up weather see it, it's not it doesn't it doesn't uh, pick up the voice so I mean that could be a minor thing if you don't use Google now then it's not really an issue for you at all which I don't really use Google now at all because I do have a Galaxy Nexus so if I wanted to use like a fully stable, no issues whatsoever, 4.2 ROM. I got that. So now the camera does work. So if we do open up the camera, 
you see it works fine it focuses fine there is no photo spear but again not really that big of a deal if you want photo spear go buy a phone that's supported you know by android 4.2 like the nexus 4 or something like that but you do of course have all your custom actions they are themed because of the theme that i'm running again so if we go back you see that the camera does work but if we use the torch toggle where it just got really bright so let's turn off the torch toggle and let's try going back in the camera you see it's you get the error where it cannot connect the camera so in order to fix this if you just reboot your phone after using the torch then the camera works again so I mean it's not that big of a deal since this phone does boot up in like 10 seconds but that's pretty much it I'm not sure what else to talk about for this ROM besides it's just awesome it's an almost fully working Android 4.2 ROM except for Google Now. And of course the torch, you know, issue. And it's kind of missing the, you know, gesture settings with the S Pen, but that's not that big of a deal, I guess. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see any more videos on the Galaxy Note 2, the Galaxy Nexus, and the Galaxy S3 that I will be getting on Monday, be sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.